by you since I don't know when So I made up my mind it must come to an end Mia, here I go again, Mama. How can I resist you, Mama Mia? Does it show again, Mama? Just how much I missed you. Yeah, I've been broken hearted, blue since the day we parted. Why, why did I ever let you go, Mama Mia? Now I really know. Mia, here I go again, Mama. How can I resist you, Mama Mia? Does it show again, Mama? Just how much I missed you. Yeah, I've been broken hearted, blue since the day we parted. Why, why did I ever let you go, Mama Mia? Even if I say bye bye. Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out an ABBA classic. This is Mamma Mia. It's one of those songs that's a bit surprising for me on acoustic guitar, but I think it works great. Now, there's a few different approaches that we can take here. What I'm going to start off with is a relatively simple look at the chords, and then I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about picking up some of the kind of little melodic elements that happen during the song that you can incorporate while you're playing, like that little uh, bit at the intro. But let's start off by having a simpler look at the chords. For the intro, you want to start off with a G chord, but making sure that you're using the third and fourth fingers for your G chord. Okay, so third fret, muting the fifth string, open, 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 third fret. Now, the second chord we need is a G augmented, or a G with a sharpened fifth. And we can do that by adding the first finger down in the first fret of the fourth string. Might feel a little bit awkward, since it's kind of further over than we might be used to reaching with the first finger, but it's not particularly bad. So we have G, two, three, four. G augmented. Back to G. Back to G augmented. Then we've got the verse, so a G chord. G's been cheated by you since I don't know C. G. So I made up my mind it must come to a C. Da 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 da. G for a bar. Then it's augmented and back to the G. Back to augmented. There's a fire with C, my soul. There's a fire to D chord soul. Bass D, 
Mm. Now I'm just going to pause it there. So the verse progression, relatively simple, two bars of G, two bars of C, two bars of G, two bars of C, then one bar each, G, G augmented, the same chord that we used there in the intro, G, G augmented, two bars of C, and then two bars of D, but at the end of that, we've got the, the end of that two bars of D, we've got the just one look. Now, on the original recording, I think that they're the full block chords, but it works much nicer on guitar if you've gone from the D chord to go C add nine, you could add a little finger. Which it's kind of, it's not what I was doing, but I think it sounds better. So uh, from the D chord, you go to this C add nine, I very often, again, I play it without the first finger, so I'm just having the third, uh, second finger playing the third fret of the fifth string. It's muting the fifth string and the fourth string, but we've got the open third fret, third fret. And then dropping down to the first finger in the second fret. This time I am letting the D string ring through, but it doesn't really matter. But again, the original is probably C, G, D, but I think C. The B bass to D, and I can hear a bell ring. C with a B, C, G with a B bass, I can't sing it that far. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two. It's one of the fastest chord changes. There's one other one that pops up in the chorus. We'll worry about that when we get there. So, and then we're, eventually we get to the G chord for the chorus. So let me just play one more time through the verse and then we'll go get into the chorus chord. So from the verse, just starting off on the G, two, three, four. G's been cheated by you since I don't know C. G's been made up my mind, it must come to a C. At me now, augmented ever learn. G don't know how, augmented, but I suddenly see control. There's a fire to decode, so now into the pre chorus. Here we go. Three, four, one, and I can hear a bell ring. Three, four, one, and I forget everything. Mamma mia, we're on a G chord. Here I go again. Now we've got here a C with a G bass. So we're still holding those two outside notes there for the G chord, but we had first finger in the first fret of the second string, second finger in the second fret of the fourth string. This is a C slash G, a C chord. There's a C chord, but with a G bass note. Uh, so the chorus, so G. Mamma mia. Here I go again with a C with a G behind my How can I resist you? Back to G, Mamma Mia G, does it show again? C with a G bass behind my Just how much I missed you So relatively simple. Now the chord changes get a little bit busier now for the post chorus is what I'm calling the next part there. Yeah, I've been broken hard a bit. So that is going G. Yeah, I've been broken. Now this is a D with an F sharp bass. I generally play the F sharp bass there with the thumb and the rest of the D chord. Some people prefer to play the D with an F sharp like that or like that or like that. Use whatever one works for you or like that maybe. If you can't get that bass note with the thumb, I think it is one of those things that's worth practicing because it's a pretty commonly used chord. Uh, sounds good and it's good practice to get the thumb over. It helps you bridge that gap between beginner and intermediate. Beginners generally keep the thumb around the back of the neck and as you progress, you might start reaching around a little bit more with your thumb. Uh, and if you really struggle with all of that, then you could just play a regular D chord. That would work as well. It is only a bass note. So uh, into the chorus, uh, the post chorus, so G. Yeah, I've been D with an F sharp bass. Uh, e minor, go to the day we parted Mama, did I ever let you go? So this bit's a little tricky. So it's C, F, C. Now again, I just tend to play a regular C and then I'm muting the thinner string to rather than having to worry about flattening my first finger to get that proper F chord. 
I'm just really concentrating on those middle four strings. C to get to the F. Second finger drops down a string, a little finger sneaks in underneath the third finger. Be worth practicing C, F, C like that. I think sometimes I lift off my third finger. I don't think you need to. I'm not sure. Sometimes I do things like that just instinctively, but definitely worth practicing that little movement because it, it does come up pretty quick in the song. So, Mama, A minor for two and D for two. Second time, G a mia, E minor. Even if I say C F C, A minor to D. That's probably going back into that little intro riff. One more time all of the way through the chorus, uh, the post-chorus, so G. Yeah, I've been broken hearted. E minor, blue since the day we parted. C, F, C, A minor to D, Do, G. Mamma mia, E minor, even if I say C, F, C, A minor to D. Now, I've gone straight into adding that little melody bit in there as well. Uh, but that's all of the parts of the song that you need for the tune. The only other section, it goes, it does another chorus, another pre-chorus, a chorus, and then the post-chorus. At the end of that po uh, second post-chorus, it changes the words and it stays on the G to the uh, C over G two bars each one for a slightly different lyric. Then it goes back into a full chorus and the post chorus to end. That's what's going on on the original recording. Um, I've neglected to mention as well, to play along on the original recording, you need a cap on the seventh fret. I think it's the seventh fret, actually. I've written seventh fret, but now I'm starting to worry because I was tuning my guitar to all funny things uh, when I was transcribing this tune. It might not be seventh. Experiment, it's gonna be six, seven or eight if you want to play along with the original recording. Uh, but obviously this key is much easier for a guy singer to sing in. But experiment, it's a, a tricky song to sing in the original key anyway, so you might want to um, experiment with where you put the capo. So I think one of the important things if you're doing a tune like this on an acoustic guitar is to do some interesting things with the arrangement. If you did the same strumming pattern all of the way through, it's going to get a little bit boring. So before we get into the picking out the melody parts, let's just talk a little bit about the rhythm and uh, this is, these are my choices because it's my arrangement. It's not the original part on the record. And I would encourage you to explore it on your own and see what other variations of this you might like to come, come up with. But, but do think a little bit about having differentiation between the parts. I think that's pretty important. So generally for the intro, whether I'm doing the fancy melody or not, I'd be thinking quiet. So I'm just doing a down strum mostly on the bass string. And an up string, I'm just hitting really the middle two strings with an up pick. Gives it a kind of, you know, it's moving, but it's not too big. Then I've been cheated by you since I don't know when. Now, I've, what I'm moving to is continuous eighth note strumming, so down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up in each bar, but putting an accent on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I made up my mind, it must come to an So when it comes into that part, again, I'm trying to, I'm changing the feel. Instead of having two, three, four, one, two, which I'm moving it to very even. Now I'm thinking, one more look and I can hear the bell. So I'm really thinking. That's a build up. Whoa, whoa, mama mia. And I think this works really, really well to have this little drop there for the chorus. So while I'm doing the just one look and I can hear a bell ring, I'm thinking of the build. Looking over at everything. Whoa, whoa, mama mia. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm trying to hit the chord and do a mute 
and then drop down to all down picks. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And, and then push through. That's the G. Now with the C, C with the G bass. So I'm just pushing through on one. It's like having two guitar parts there, but it adds a really nice dynamic. Especially as it's the chorus, people are normally going to be singing along on that part, right? But the real catchy part of the chorus... So I'm really thinking about that the chorus is a drop. It's very unusual. Usually you have like a, a little drop before the chorus and then the chorus gets really big. In this case, for the main chorus, we're playing it, we're kind of bringing it down a little bit and then we're bringing it up for the post chorus, which is for me kind of the hooky part. The yeah, I've been broken hearted part is the part that feels the strongest to me. It's the bit that I want to sing along with the most when I hear it anyway. So when it hits that post chorus, so. Kind of going down, down, up, up, down. That would be a kind of a good starting point. Again, you could put go back to putting the accents on two and four. But again, what's important is at the end of that, that it's dropping down again. So, um, 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 it's dropping down again. Okay, so think about the rhythm. You can watch through uh, the little example uh, performance at the beginning there if you want to see a little bit more about the dynamics. But like I said, this is just my version of it. I would encourage you to make up your own and think about your own approach to playing the song. It doesn't have to always be like the same as what I'm suggesting, just giving you a starting point. So let's go through and look at some of these other little interesting things that you can add in, little melody elements. Uh, particularly there's the, the, the one for the intro. And a little bit there on the C chord, which I think just, it falls nicely under the fingers, so it'd be rude not to have a little look at it. Hey, so uh, starting off with the intro. So the very intro, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so we're just playing the G augmented the first time. So I'm just strum. And I'm trying to target. So I'm leaving my third finger down. Playing the fourth string, second fret on the fourth string, open G string, and little finger going down the fourth fret of the third string. A little bit tricky. You definitely want to practice doing that first of all. But then the first finger goes down. So we end up with this one and two and three and four and one. think that's a nice little way to introduce the tune because it's a very familiar part of the song part of a very familiar part of the melody but there's also a nice little bit that you can add in in the verses as well on the c chord so the verses start with a g been cheated by you since i don't know c so there's this nice little movement there on the c But important to realize that I'm still strumming at this point. I'm not moving to anything difficult. I'm just trying to target a few different strings while I strum. So instead of putting my full C chord down, although sometimes I do start with the full C chord, I'm only strumming these three, the three strings, fifth string, fourth string, third string. So I'm not, not playing that second string at all. And that allows me to go And 
then I'm going up pick, starting from the second string, lifting uh, with the first finger down on the note C, lifting the first finger off with another the next upstroke, and then doing an upstroke targeting that th open third string again. So that gives you a few little ideas to play around with as well. There are lots more little melodic elements within the song that you might like to try and explore as well. Have a listen to the original recording and see which of the bits that really stand out to you that you might like to incorporate into your own arrangement. I really think this is a super fun song, definitely a good sing-along one for the parties. Lots of people like ABBA, lots of people know this song. Uh, so yeah, really good one to add to your party campfire play-along list if you happen to be digging it. Uh, I certainly enjoyed playing it much more than I thought. I never, for some reason I hadn't really thought of this tune as being a, a solid acoustic tune before but anyway uh, have yourself an absolutely fantastic day remember there's hundreds more songs over on the website all graded by difficulty and bands and all that sort of stuff so go and check it out if you haven't been over on the website for a little while have a great day bye bye <laughs>